Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Thank you for joining us on Adobe Live. I'm Jeremy Slagle. I'm a graphic designer here in Columbus, Ohio. And this is Penny Slagle. She is the uh, chief hospitality officer here at the office. And she's tired, apparently, from her walk this morning, that big yawn. Um, I brought her in because we're going to be talking a lot about Penny today. So I uh, just wanted to share her with you for a minute. Let me hand her off to mom here. Thanks, babe, for bringing her in. So, uh, like I said, my name is Jeremy Slagle. I'm a graphic designer and illustrator here in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, if you're joining us on YouTube, be sure to smash that subscribe button and follow us on Adobe Live on Instagram for the latest streams and updates and more. Uh, also, if you want to be able to be part of the whole uh, interactive process today while we're on, um, you can head over to behance.net slash Adobe Live, and uh, you can just catch all the action there. You can even comment and let us know you're here. I'm looking forward to hearing from you all today. So today, I want to just talk to you about Illustrator. Obviously, this is an Illustrator boot camp. Um, but I have been using Adobe Illustrator as a graphic designer and illustrator for over 25 years. And um, it seems like every time I use this software or I have a new project, it has its own set of challenges involved with it. So the one I want to share with you today was certainly one of those. And um, even after all these years of using the software, I'm learning new ways to use it and, and uh, to make my life easier and my process more efficient. So I'm going to share some of that stuff with you today. Um, and also keep in mind, I'm learning along with you. So if there's anything that you see that I'm like, well, that's dumb, Jeremy, you should do it this way. It's way easier. I am always open to hearing your thoughts and your feedback and your questions. I'm sure there are probably 50 different ways to do everything. And uh, sometimes I, it takes me a little longer to figure some of that stuff out. But hopefully today, I'm going to have an opportunity to kind of share some cool stuff with you that will help make your next project a little bit better. So for the next hour, uh, I'm going to walk you through the process of designing an upcoming marketing campaign. Um, this is a very special project, uh, and it is uh, it is the campaign, illustrated campaign for the 25th anniversary of Lenny's Grill and Subs. Uh, they are a nationwide sub sandwich chain based in Memphis, Tennessee. I've been working on this all summer, and I have not even been allowed to talk about it, much less share it with anybody. And it actually launches next month. Uh, so the the kind people there are allowing me to unveil it, show it uh, some of it with you to you today, and then walk you through that process as well. So um, let's, uh, I'm going to just kind of walk through my process for this project, show you some things I've learned along the way. So before we get in too deep, I want to tell you a little bit of a short backstory behind this project. So let's head over to my screen. So I'm calling this uh, Penny uh, Lenny's Penny and Blenny, and you'll see why. Not only are these fun, uh, fun rhyming names, but they all are relevant to this project. And I want to welcome all of you this morning as well. Uh, nice to see. I can see all people. Oh, thank you uh, for commenting on my puppy. She is beautiful. I I really love her a lot. She's been a great addition to uh, to the studio here and people just come by to see her as much as they come by to see me. So that's kind of cool. But you'll see why I'm introducing her to you as well. So you'll see her name is right there on uh, the slides for this presentation. So a quick backstory uh, up until about uh, for the entire entirety of my agency, my studio, we've had a, a dog around. I've always worked around a dog. There's pictures of me at two years old sitting and drawing with my dog by my side. It's, it's always been an important part of the culture of my work. Um, and this is Scout. Scout was uh, part of the studio for 14 years, and we lost her last October, and it was really, really rough. Um, and um, I began to kind of start looking for a new, uh, a new chief hospitality officer for the office. And I came across this video online. This is how graphic design brings people together, by the way. Um, while I was watching this video, I did not know this person. I had never heard of Forever Golden Doodle um, as a breeder. I'm just watching this. And I notice that right there on uh, the breeder's forearm is a logo that I illustrated and did for a pizza shop an hour and a half away. And I was like, what uh, craziness? And uh, we made this really awesome connection. We become friends since then and um i put my name in for the first the first 
uh, next litter that was coming out. About, about December, we had an opportunity to go hang with this puppy and um, she just really, uh, she really connected with us. And I just got super excited. I don't know about you, but when something just totally uh, is fills my mind, the first thing I do is I want to just create something from it. So if you follow my Instagram, you'll see I'm kind of a bit of a nerd and I've got a little bit obsessive about this puppy. And, uh, and she's become part of sort of some illustrations, some promotionals I've done. Um, you know, this is, was, uh, uh, May the 5th, uh, May the 4th be with you. We've got Penny dressed up as an Ewok. So I've used her in lots of illustrations. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is because when you go out and start sharing your joy and you start showing the work you're doing, especially when it's something that really resonates with you, um, it, it, it takes it to a new level and allows opportunities you didn't expect. Uh, so in preparation for the new dog coming and the new recruit, I designed this poster. Uh, it's a small eight and a half by 11 uh, poster that is printed with risograph. And that's the other thing we're going to get into today is, is risograph printing. But uh, basically, uh, you know, I even designed her little stainless steel doll, dog tag that she wears, but it all kind of goes together. And the, the point of doing this was to really celebrate. So when clients came by, came by the studio, I had something to hand out and give people um, and just kind of celebrate her with stickers and a, and a little poster. And I learned a lot about the process of risograph printing through it. So this is Penny. Uh, lots of people came by. I had, uh, you know, creative partners and uh, other designers and people came by to, to claim their risograph and just really, uh, you know, celebrate along with us. So here's Penny today. These are only just a couple couple weeks old. She's a big part of the family. Um, she loves going hiking with us and uh, even takes trips to Costco uh, in my backpack. We're one of those families that like to take our dog everywhere we go. So um, she has been out there on Instagram and I've been posting pictures on my on my feed. She even has her own Instagram. And just by sharing the joy uh, and the process with people, we ended up on the radar uh, of some cool projects. This is a recent cover I designed and illustrated for Fortune magazine. And you'll see there on the right, I snuck Penny in there. She's on a walk with my wife, which is her favorite thing to do. Uh, that dog gets about seven or eight miles of walks every day just so that she can run that uh, puppy energy out. And then um, even um, more recently, Penny became a spokes puppy for this project. And so what I want to uh, first thing I want to help you understand or just share with you is as you do things in, and you use your gifts, you use your talent, you use your skills, and you uh, express that and share that with the rest of the world, um, it does cool things. It does great things. And it even can lead to new business and new projects. So uh, this spring, I got contacted by Lenny's Grill and Subs. If you want to follow them on Instagram, uh, they're at Lenny's Subs. And they basically approached me and said, we're doing our 25th, uh, our 25th anniversary is coming up this year. And we're really excited about it. And one of the things that we've noticed is that a lot of the people who uh, eat and, and are big Lenny's fans also happen to be big dog fans. And so um, they are giving a portion of the proceeds of their money next year in their 25th year to no kill dog shelters. And so um, because of that and, and because of the stuff I've been posting, they basically said, hey, we love your story with your dog. We love the draw the illustrations you've been doing with your dog. So we'd love to have you uh, kind of work on this project with us, which was super, super cool. So this summer, uh, this was this is one of the projects I got to work on and it was super fun. We made stickers and posters. Um, it'll be on their social media. We're designing other uh, pieces and parts that are going to be coming out and it's just going to be really exciting. So everything um, that uh, that we went through, I'm going to just show you just a couple highlights, excuse me, of the process we went through to do this, to do this project. So one of the things we talked about early on in, uh, in the uh, process of talking about this was the style of the illustration. And the other reason they contacted me is not just because of the dog, but they liked some of the illustration style that they've seen in my uh, work and on my portfolio online. So you can see here, a couple of these are mine and a couple of these are not. 
Um, the one at the top left there, that's by Ricardo Parisa. I'm not sure how his last name is pronounced, uh, but uh, the bottom left, I don't know who designed this, is absolutely gorgeous. Client loves the colors. I tried to find out who it was, but I couldn't find it, but just absolutely beautiful. One of the things that the client loves is the illustrations I do of animals. I do lots of animal illustrations uh, and I share those a lot on my Instagram as well. Oh, wow. We've got someone from Ukraine uh, joining us. That's awesome. Natalia, thank you for joining us. And thank you uh, <laughs> that, that you're commenting about my dog. She is adorable. Um, and I uh, just wanted to say also thanks to others that are joining us right now. Uh, please uh, hang in there. We're going to get to some cool illustrator stuff in a minute. I'm going through some mood boards. Um, so here's just a couple other illustrations that we had in the mood boards. They really like that kind of geometric shapes, the flat colors, um, but but some shading in it as well. Here's some other uh, stuff that was in the mood board. There's almost uh, the dimensionality. Like if you look at the kangaroo and in like the dog at the bottom, for instance, there's shading and different things that just help separate that four illustrations, which is something we thought was was pretty darn cool as well. So uh, you'll see some of this integrated. The other part of this is, is they wanted a real 90s feel to this and uh, kind of a callback to some of the earlier Lenny's stuff, the early uh, art and put them on here. And then the other thing that they really liked was something that had a handmade, hand illustrated or hand printed feel to the whole thing. So um, that piece at the top right there is by Mikey Burton. And you can see that the way he created that, uh, whether he did it in Photoshop or actually printed it, I'm not sure, but it's inks a little bit uh, blotchy. And so these are all things that are kind of coming into play as we're thinking about what the direction, the visual direction of this campaign is going to be. Um, because uh, they resonate with that idea, I uh, landed on Risa graph printing. And so Riso is so cool. Um, I, I had already done that one project with Penny uh, and they it really resonated with them as well. So we decided to go down this path uh, uh, as part of the print process. It just does that thing where the color, the, uh, the colors don't quite line up and register quite right. So it just has a, a real vintage sort of hand-drawn uh, so the eight, the 90s culture. If you grew up in the 90s, you know rollerblades was a, were a huge thing. Uh, and so we decided we would in incorporate rollerblades and fanny packs and bright, bold colors, uh, knee pads, and just really kind of have a lot on this font called Blenny. So here's where Blenny is coming. It had a bit of a retro feel, but also... Uh, looked like it was built with those simple shapes, like simple, um, uh, G really cool kind of block shapes and and um, stuff that's just made from simple shapes, which is how we're going to build the illustration. So picking a font that works well with that as well. Uh, looks like we're... <sighs> Sounds like they're trying to figure some things out. But if you look at that... Um, one of the things that really uh, I love about this font is on the bottom right there, I just went ahead and put together this little thing is of a 25 with the years, the, the 1998 to, to 2023, and uh, did a little crest just to kind of show them how the lockup of these fonts, um, which is Gazetta, which is that font that's in the, on the upper right, super, super cool font on uh, available on Adobe fonts as well. Um, it, it's just... Okay. Okay. So I'm hearing that I'm going to put you on standby for just a minute. We'll be back in about two minutes while we adjust the buffering problem. So hang with us and we'll be right back.
yay, we're back. Hopefully this solved the problem. We had to do a quick reboot of some software uh, and uh, hopefully we're streaming okay. Can you let me know if you're hearing me better, seeing me better, let me know. Uh, let us just know in the chat there. I uh, apologize for any inconvenience, but hopefully the rest of this is going to go nice and smooth on our end. So uh, such a was such a funky font that uh, adding that script in there ended up being a little much. So like all good projects, I went ahead and started in my sketchbook, lots of quick sketches. Um, and then this one on the top left here is kind of where I landed. Um, tip, my typical process is I will. So it sounds like we're still buff. Yay, we're back. Woohoo. Hopefully this is a lot better. Uh, crazy stuff going on here. Um, our LA feed was struggling a little bit. So now we're going through Germany. Who knew that this was even possible? Um, the whole cal cavalry came uh, and I appreciate everybody at Adobe kind of scrambling to help get us back on online and on the air. So um, because we are uh, kind of in a little bit of a hurry here. I'm going to kind of rush through this part real quick so we can get right over to Illustrator. Um, essentially, you know, like everything, we I go through a sketch phase. Here's kind of a quick uh, illustration of that. But I love working with Circle. Someone else pointed this out uh, in the comment section we were just talking about uh, how circles are, are kind of a thing. And it's definitely a thing for me because I love working with circles. So um, you can see here that as I'm illustrating, as I'm sketching, as I'm thinking through, I am thinking in circles and shapes. So this is kind of where we landed for my initial sketch uh, in the initial direction for this with Lenny's for approval. And this is where we kind of ended up finally at uh, for, oops, sorry, we lost you there for a second. I can go back. Uh, this is where we ended up uh, with the, the final illustration on this. And I'm going to show you exactly uh, how we kind of ended up here. And there's Penny hanging out with me while I'm working on the project, sitting on the couch. So, so here's uh, a, a quick deep dive, a quick dive. We're going to go quickly through some of this now uh, due to some time constraints we have, but uh, risograph printing. So something you have to understand about the way risograph printing, it's basically uh, a new technology, a new form of what used to be called mimeograph printing. Growing up in the 80s and in uh, we used to get these these uh, prints uh, in school, like in elementary school, and all the per all the ink was in purple. These were called mimeograph. It was a really, really inexpensive way for like a school to do worksheets and such. So, um, you know, risograph is basically the same thing. It's just that the technology has improved. So if you look at this illustration on the right, uh, the guy here is putting different ink cartridges with stencils wrapped around the drums into this risograph printer. It prints specific spot colors. And on the left, you'll see that you have a certain number of those colors that you can actually work with. So uh, yeah, I can sm someone, uh, Wade commented that he can smell the prints through the screen. If you grew up with mimeographs, you know exactly what he means. If you sniffed those things, it was like, whoo, like you could probably get high off of that. Um, the newer uh, risograph printing inks are actually derived from rice ink. So it's actually really um, ecologic. It's good for the earth. Um, and so basically you have to choose from the colors they have. You don't have cyan, yellow, magenta, and black like you do 
with process colors. So if you if you understand how process colors work, um, you and you also understand how swatches work in Illustrator. If you create or have a swatch and you decide you want to edit it, you can double click it, switch switch it to CMYK. And now you can play with all of these sliders to adjust that color. And then the, the printer that you send it to is going to actually mix those colors to make whatever color you're asking for. But what do you do when you have a different set of colors you have to work from to create your art? And, and so that was kind of the conundrum uh, that I had to deal with in this situation. So I kind of figured something out that I think you, you'll appreciate. So I went with a local uh, risograph printer here called Clatterpress, and um, this is these are the colors that they show on their website. Now, most risograph printers will also provide you with the uh, color palette that's downloadable, and you can basically place them right into your swatches in Illustrator, so you have something that looks uh, that that looks as close as possible to what you'll actually be getting in output. So. I just want to make sure everybody seems like everybody in the chat is happy right now. Uh, it looks like um, no more issues. Um, oh, Andrew joined. Hi, Andrew. Uh, Jeremy, King Jeremy is in the house. Apparently I'm in the house. Um, so, so I'm going to just kind of show you sort of a process I came up with for how I could um, create the colors I needed for this project. So on the top here, you'll see Lenny's brand colors, fortunately covered, uh, by this color palette. We've got the bright red and the black already available to us, which is super cool. Um, that, that makes our lives a lot easy. So check, check, got those. Um, and those are definitely two of the colors we're going to use, but then we have some things like, uh, we have a sub sandwich that the dog has to carry, uh, in the, in the picture. And also, Penny is brown and those colors aren't in here anywhere. So we have to figure out ways to create these product colors across the top. And then the other thing that's cool is we can use these other bright colors to, you know, in full 100% um, or in shades to, uh, to like show different things like the rollerblades and her hat and, and other things, the type and all that can be solid, but we do need to mix a few colors. So basically what I did was, um, I came up with this process and I wanted to kind of show it to you here. Um, on the top here, you'll kind of see that I'm taking each of these colors. This is that pure red color that is showing up over here on the left. And I am not sure why. Let's see. Uh, let me unlock all of those. There we go. Um, the, the, all of these are basically tints of the colors on the left. And I overlaid these circles i adjusted the uh the opacity a little bit to kind of pull these colors out the bread and then penny's kind of orange rusty brown color and then a dark version of her orange rusty brown color uh to to kind of add some depth to the illustration so this is kind of where they ended up at the bottom down here but the way i came about figured out how to do this is is right here below so I'm going to just show show you with this uh, shape up here. This is actually Penny's ear from my illustration. I pulled it into here and I'm going to show you kind of how I did this. So what you can do is start with just creating a box and you're going to go to your swatches and choose one of the colors. It doesn't really matter which of the colors. I'm going to go ahead and just start with the red color here and we're going to fill it with the red color, right? You'll notice that on the left, this is 85% uh, red. This is 90% of this teal and 100% of this yellow. So um, how do you make it so that, that all of those colors encapsulate in the exact same shape? And that is, that is the trick that I did a little bit of work on. So hopefully you'll be able to track with me here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our appearances uh, panel. So. Um, I'm going to create a second fill on the same shape. So if I add a new fill, I can actually come up here and create a go to like the yellow, for instance, and I'm going to make a yellow fill. And then I'm going to go over here to the colors again, add a new fill, and I'm going to add 
my light mint color, which is this mint blue right here. So, so this object now has all three of these colors combined in one object, but you'll notice that um, it, right, it only is showing the top color that is in the, uh, that is in the fill in the appearances menu. So what I'll do is I'm going to shift click that color, which brings this dialog box up and allows me to create a tint. So I'm going to make that 90%. And then I'm going to go over here to my transparency and I'm going to set that to multiply. All right. So now this blue is now multiplying and you're starting to see this come together. I'm going to go to the yellow color here. I'm going to shift click the yellow. It is already at 100%, but it needs to be set to multiply. And then the, the last color here you'll see is 85%, right? So the 85%, uh, I'm going to just shift click this set this to 85%. Because it's the last color on the bottom, I don't have to set it to multiply. Um, all of these colors are now multiplying on top of each other, which is essentially mixing the colors into this new brown color. So the next step is I will take this and I'm going to create a graphic style with this color. So if you go to your Windows graphic styles, they are uh, somewhere in here. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. Graphic styles. Um, you'll notice I already have them in here, but it's as simple as basically clicking this and dragging it in and create a new style. So that one that I just created down at the bottom there that says graphic style, that is the one I just created. And anything that I create and I click that graphic style, it will fill with all three of those colors, which is super cool. Um, and we can even check by going to Windows and opening up our separations preview. Now, it's really, really important when you do separations preview that you make sure that your document is in CMYK mode. If you have it set in RGB, it just won't work. And you'll be like, this doesn't work. It does. You just have to make sure your illustration is set to CMYK mode in order for it to work. But if you wanted to engage it, you just basically click the overprint preview button. It kind of takes a second, it redraws the illustration. And I'm just gonna go ahead and turn all CMYK off because we're not using any process colors. You'll see that my type down here disappeared because it was actually a process black. But um, if I turn off, for instance, the bright red and I make that go away, you'll see that it goes away on the illustration only showing the other two colors. That means that it actually is going to separate out when this goes to the printer and they have to create separations for each color to create that stencil, this is going to work. So uh, again, if I click mint and turn that one off, you're left with yellow. So again, this is working. So what's cool about this process is, is I can create three different or as many different color swatches as I possibly want. And then it's as easy as dragging those over into the graphic styles menu over here. And now you have the ability to let me bring all these back here. And I'll turn the overprint preview off. Um, and now you can see exactly how I've been able to create that. Here's where I ran into an issue. So I'm going to make this graphic style penny dark, all right? But if you notice up here uh, on this illustration, I have some shading in here. So if I go back and I show you uh, back here to the mixing colors, I have this dark neutral. Every time I do an illustration, I like to have a dark neutral color. And the reason is because I like to add some shade in. But if you ever notice, shadows are almost never black. Um, the only reason, in fact, I'm using black on this is because it's needed in the client's logo. Otherwise, I wouldn't be using black at all in this illustration. Um, but a dark neutral is really nice. And you notice also it is a separate spot color from the lighter blue, the mint blue that I'm using. Because when you print something, you can only print 100% of the color. And I know that sounds really confusing. And if you actually, um, uh, sometimes you'll get a dialog box when you save your Illustrator file and it says something like, um, be careful when you're using spot colors and transportation or uh, tra transportation. Uh, and when you, when you have uh, transparency involved in spot colors because it can screw stuff up when it actually goes to the printer. And here's why. Um, in my illustration here, you'll notice 
this cable that's coming off the bottom of her headphones here is the same blue that I have in her sleeve and in the ringer uh, collar on her t-shirt here. And so I have to know that when that actually separates out for print, here's, here's the actual printed piece here. You'll notice that if you look closely, you can only print 100% of that color. So it will, it will automatically just kind of blend in and become part of that. I love that about this print process, but it will not show up like that in your illustration. Um, it will look very different from this when it actually goes to print. So keep that in mind. So the reason I do that is so that I can use that color and you can see it here. I'm bringing in that, uh, that darker color and I'm using it as a way to shade in. But here's the problem. If I go here and the way I typically would do something like this is I would either create a clipping mask or I would do draw inside the object. But what happens is if I, I'm going to cut this for a second. I'm going to go over here to the draw inside feature. If you have not messed with draw inside, um, it's something I actually wasn't aware of up until recently. And it blew my mind. It's such a cool feature. Um, click the draw inside button and you can do all sorts of stuff now where you draw. It's the same as creating a, a clipping mask, except that it keeps the color of the object as it was, which is so cool. You don't have to create multiple objects and stack them on top of each other. You can actually keep the background color and draw right in here. But you'll see what happens as soon as you add an element to this, it breaks the way that the transparency works in appearances. So that is a no-go for me because what I really want to be able to do is create my object so that when I have uh, for instance, a, sh a shadow in here, I don't have a bunch of different stacked things. And if, if the client or somebody, you know, if I decide I want to change something, I can make changes and edits to this shape and it all stays as part of, uh, part of that object. So what I have to do for this is if I want to do that is I basically have done a little bit of a cheat where this is set up. Um, this is just a basic square that has been set to um, my graphic style that we made earlier. I'm overlaying this brush so that it adds that shaded texture. I'm basically going to do a uh, clipping mask. So group those objects, send it to the back, select that foreground object, right click, make clipping mask. And now I have everything I want to do and it still works. So if I go to separations preview and I click that overprint preview button, um, you'll see that the colors are in fact separating correctly. So as I turn these off, you'll see that it is actually separating correctly, which is awesome. And there's our, uh, blue that's, that's right in there and it's set to overprint, uh, or set to multiply actually, which is really, really cool. So that's a great way to do that. And uh, Reverb Mike, it's just impressive. The dog can do all that while eating a sandwich. It is amazing. Um, I told you she's an amazing dog. And uh, and I stand by that uh, even, even today. So here's our final illustration on this. We've got uh, about a mm, little less than 10 minutes left. So I'm going to skip ahead and just show you a couple of little tips and tricks. Some things that I've found that makes my uh, working on a project like this even easier to do. Um, so one of the things that I've learned over this uh, this last year is I like to kind of keep my assets, my illustration assets separate a little bit. And I'll explain why. Um, you know, when I first started using Illustrator and I was going to, for instance, draw this Walkman right here, I would have just basically started by building the shapes and building that Walkman right there in place creating it, uh, you know, setting the angle and all of that stuff. And then, then you run into the issue of like, I want to option drag, uh, this say, for instance, the spool on the left side of the tape. I want to, I want to make it, put it over here. Well, shoot. Um, I can't shift drag it to keep it, uh, you know, perfectly aligned now because I'm building my illustration on an angle. So then I started basically, uh, you know, building the illustrations, and just kind of creating all the different objects just straight on and then kind of rotating them later. It took me a little while to figure that out, but, um, but yeah, obviously, duh, it makes sense. So, so you can do this. And then what I found myself doing was constantly 
keeping a copy of this. So let's say for instance, uh, the client comes back and they wanted me to, to add a little bit more to this, right? So um, let's say that uh, I had already created my Walkman up here and we wanted to uh, add a little bit more to this. So let's just kind of add a text box here and I'm gonna say walk dog. And, oh, I still have overprint preview on, which is why it's not showing up correctly here. It's also possible I'm on the wrong layer. Let's see. Uh, let's make sure we're in the right place here. Not wanting to type. Let's try this again. And let's go over here and fill that black. Any ideas, guys? Am I on a layer? Ah, maybe it's because I'm on a background layer. Let's check here. Interesting. I'm not 100% sure what is going on. Any ideas? Anyone to throw? So someone's telling me to turn black on. Black is on in my overprint preview. I turned my black back on again. It's right there. Let me uh, see what's going on here. Well, anyways, uh, basically what, what, what I would do is I would, for instance, type type it in here. I might embellish this and, uh, you know, add, add some little features, but, but creating it at an angle is a real pain in the butt. I would have to, you know, rotate my text box to fit and all of that. So now what's great is if I want to, um, to make any adjustments, whether it's to her skates, to the sandwich, the sandwich is very detailed. It took a lot to kind of create that um, that sandwich. And if I had created it on its side, it would have been a real pain to make any adjustments to. So um, so I, I what I do is now is I create the, take this illustration, I drag it into symbols. You'll see that I have all my symbols over here. And then I bring it back in place uh, over here. And the reason I do that is because now I don't have to keep any of these, whether it's the chips, the chips bag, uh, the Lenny's logo here, anything that I've, that I'm making duplicates of or changing. Um, it's really, really cool that you can just kind of get right in here and I'm going to, let me try this. I'm going to double click, see if it'll let me actually add it right here. Let's try this one more time. Oh, uh, look at that. All right. So if I update my art here, within the uh, the symbol itself, as soon as I click off of it and go back to my drawing, it now will show up. Right here in my illustration. So I didn't have to worry about like getting it in that right in, in the exact right area, you know, um, and, and so it keeps everything at a nice 45 degree or 90 degree angle so that that adding it making updates are really simple so really the what's being scaled and rotated is actually the symbol that that's being used there so nice little fun tip and trick i did the same thing with the chips um sometimes a client comes back and says those chips don't look like the kind of chips we have or or maybe we want to make them a little bit more like ruffles um the nice thing about about doing it this way also with symbols is i only have to make the one adjustment to one chip and it updates all the chips in the entire illustration. Same uh, goes for the skates. Um, I have two skates here. This is an opportunity to use that draw inside feature that I was talking about before, where I basically took that, uh, let's see if I can double click the skate over here. I think I'm just having some redraw issues. Um, And you'll see that like, for instance, this 
uh, line is drawn inside this object by using that uh, draw inside feature, which is really, really cool. It allows me to kind of make those changes and um, <laughs> ruffles. Thanks, Nan. That's a good one. Uh, make any adjustments. If I if if the client said, "Hey, we want to make these a little sportier," I could throw a uh, a lightning bolt on here, real quick, and uh, fill that with our nice bright yellow color. I'm running into some issues with my colors right now. I am not sure what's going on. I'm sure I'll probably figure it all out uh, by the time I'm done today. But basically, once you make that update to the symbol and then save it, it'll automatically add it to the rest of your illustration. So I had a few other things I wanted to talk with you guys about today. Unfortunately, we ran into some technical issues, um, but I've really enjoyed this. I've really enjoyed the opportunity to kind of share this project with you. Um, you know, think about as you work on your projects that there are different ways that you can approach things. And um, maybe it's, you know, using, for instance, you'll see I've created some brushes on the bottom to make like the zipper that goes on the fanny pack or um, the fur that goes around the cuffs of her sleeves. Those are all made by using uh, Illustrator custom brushes in order to uh, in order to create some of those cool shapes. So I just wanted to say thank you. I'm sorry, our time is up for today. Uh, thank you all for hanging out with me. Thanks again to Adobe for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. So uh, be sure to stick around for uh, more inspirational Adobe content and have a great day. Uh, see you soon.